So a student wants to investigate the effects of real versus substitute eggs on his favorite brownie recipe. Ten of his friends have come up with a consensus for the ranking of each of eight batches on a scale from one to ten that has been recorded. Four of the batches were made with real eggs, four with substitute eggs. The judges tasted the brownies in a random order. The mean score for the real eggs was 6.89 with a standard deviation of 0.647. The mean score of the substitute egg was 4.86 with a standard deviation of 0.398. Complete parts A through D. So what are the null and alternative hypotheses? So we can click on the table here if we need to just see that. We'll look at that in a moment. So we've got two. We're comparing the real eggs to the substitute eggs. Um, here's a box plot. Boy, it looks like there's a difference done there. Real eggs look like they're doing a little better than the substitute eggs. So let's take a look at this. So the null alternative, so the null is always that they're equal. And in this case, we're talking about the mean, right? So we're looking at the mean are equal, and HA is the means are not equal. Not sure why they didn't use the not equal to symbol, but anyway, that's what we go with. What can be concluded from the ANOVA table? So it wants us to identify the test statistic. And so the F ratio is round, uh, type an integer or decimal. So I'm not sure what they want us to round to here. So we'll say 28.5667. It like that. Identify the p-value. We're here at 0 0.0018. Now let's draw a conclusion. And it tells us here, and this is the first place they've given us the indication of what alpha is. Although with a p-value that low and we're just dealing with brownies, we'd figure we're going to be um, rejecting HO, right? So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That's a pretty low p-value. The real eggs have a significant different mean score. So do the assumptions for the test seem reasonable? Um, you know, the independence, equal variance assumption, they appear reasonable. And it would be nice to see, um, we have done a lot of this in here, or any of it, or residuals to verify the normal population. Really, we want to be able to see the raw data and we didn't get to really see that right just to make sure that the normal population is indeed um, reasonable so we're not given anything with that right i mean it looks like we could say normal is reasonable um residuals have nothing to do with independence residuals you plot those to see if it could come from normal distribution now uh, perform a two sample pool t test to see the difference. What is the p value with this one? And we're going to compare the square of the t statistic to the f ratio. Excellent. Okay, so I already have the t test pulled up here and that input. So I've, I went to t stat t test two sample with summary. And then I go ahead and populate it with the numbers they gave me. You know, the sample mean of the first sample 6.89, sample standard deviation, and so forth and so forth. Make sure you leave the pooled variances on and press compute. And again, our null is that they're equal. Alternative is that they're not equal. And press compute. And what do we have going on here? So we have a p-value of 0 0.0018. Does that look familiar? Okay, try to arrange this so you can see both of them. 0 0.0018. 0 0.0018. So it's exactly the same. I did have to round. It says round to three places. This one said to round to three places, so I missed it when I put in 0 0.0018. Um, so 0 0.002. Compare the square of the T statistic to the F ratio. So here is our T statistic. 5.344814. 8219. Okay, so I went ahead and took the T statistic, 5.344818219, and squared it. And what am I going to get? 28.567. Does that look familiar at all? Look at that. It's the same thing. So computationally, the F ratio is just a square of our T statistic.
So I hope that helps.